Welcome back everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. We're reading some more Am I the A-hole today and I hope you're excited. I'm starting the day with this today so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know if it's a good idea to start a day with something like this, but hey, if we're one thing on the Fincy channel, it's adventurous. Enjoy guys. Am I the a-hole for expressing to my in-laws that I don't want to be their server for their family Christmas dinner? So, I'm a newlywed and my in-laws are rolling into town for Christmas and staying at my husband's and my new house. They mentioned wanting to dine out for Christmas dinner, but I offered to whip up a home-cooked feast instead. Unfortunately, they turned down the offer. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I'm currently working as a server in our town after recently being laid off from my corporate job. Lucky for me, the restaurant is shut on Christmas Eve and Christmas. Well, turns out my mother-in-law had other plans. She called up my workplace without even speaking to me beforehand and was asking for me to be their server for their entire Christmas dinner. I found out through my husband that I'd be playing the role of their server for their festive family celebration and my Christmas gift would be a sweet tip and takeout from my restaurant. Seems a bit odd especially since our restaurant isn't even going to be open on Christmas Eve or Christmas and I'd be available to spend time with them on those days. They're scheduling this dinner the day before we close and making it their designated family celebration. Well, the absolute audacity. I politely declined because let's be real, being excluded from Christmas dinner while working as their server, yeah, that's a hard pass from me. Unfortunately, I was told that I was being dramatic and there's nothing weird about me being their server for their family Christmas dinner. Thoughts, anyone? Oh my God, how dare they? They think you're being dramatic because you don't want to do this? God, they sound awful. Why are in-laws always so bad? Every time we read about in-laws or mother-in-laws or anything, they're always the most awful people ever. Yeah, you haven't done anything that's even a little bit a-holy. But them on the other hand, edit, wow, I'm truly amazed by the overwhelming support I've received. I never expected this post to gain so much attention. Thank you to everybody who took the time to read and respond. I took the opportunity to establish clear boundaries during a FaceTime session, emphasizing that such behavior is not acceptable, particularly considering the racial and economic differences between us. As a biracial woman from a lower class family, it was crucial for me to assert myself and to not dismiss their behavior. I might take some time to respond to messages as there's a lot to sift through. Thank you all for standing with me. You've all helped me so much. Thank you. Edit slash update number two. Mother-in-law was upset that I'd taken a stand against her Christmas plans. My husband stood by my side through it all, supporting the decision to uninvite everyone who supported this decision. We're now focusing on creating a Christmas atmosphere that's positive and stress-free, sans the drama. Your words truly gave me the strength to navigate this challenging situation. If anyone has similar stories or more advice to share, I'm all ears. Yeah, no, you're 100% in the right. And I can't even stress enough how in the wrong the other people are. Like, yeah, you're not even invited to the dinner, but they want you to be the server. And also, it's not like it was your idea or something. It was their idea and they're trying to get you to do it. And yeah, it's super demeaning and degrading. The top comment says, not the a-hole. Damn, that's insulting and spiteful AF. We don't want you to cook or be a participant in our Christmas celebration but we'd love to come to your workplace and have you service. So yeah, technically you're there with us, but you can't contribute to the conversation and you're required to be polite because it's your job. And to say that your gift is the tip and takeout, what the ever-loving you-know-what kind of BS is that? I tell your boss that you request to not serve them or switch with a co-worker or call out last minute or something. How in the hell does your husband not see the offense in their actions and isn't supporting you? Yeah, oh my God, they suck. And yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole. And yeah, you're doing the right thing, OP. If I were you, I wouldn't go anywhere near them for a long time. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for cancelling my best friend's bachelorette party after she fired me as a bridesmaid? I'm going to try and sum this up the most I can. I'm a full-time student, so I'm currently living off student loans and what little hours I can work outside of school. I've spent around a grand on my best friend's wedding so far, 350 on the flight home to attend the wedding as I'm away for school, and about 100 on the gift I sent for her bridal shower. The maid of honor is currently very pregnant and having a rough time. She asked me to plan the bachelorette party. I agreed. I planned it perfectly and I had it as a surprise. I messaged the other girls the plan. When they all agreed, I went ahead and booked my idea. I spent, this is on top of the 1000 I spent earlier, 400 on a limo to go bar hopping. The bride loves bar hopping and I booked us a $700 Airbnb to crash in after. As of right now, the other bridesmaids did not chip in. This was out of pocket, but they said they'd pay me back later. About a month later and two other girls got 
kick from the bridal party group chat, along with a paragraph from the bride saying that we were no longer invited because we weren't quite on quite honoring her wishes when asked. She didn't answer what she meant or what we'd done wrong. Two days pass and she adds us back to the chat and apologizes saying that she was just stressed. We all talk about it and we made up. Yesterday the same happened except this time I'm the only one who got removed with a paragraph going off on me telling me that I'm not respecting her or her wishes, that she wishes that she never invited me or asked me to be a bridesmaid. When asked what happened or what I did wrong, again radio silence, today she messages me apologizing saying that she's sorry for lashing out and that she'd like me there but not as a bridesmaid as it would make her uncomfortable and I'm not allowed to wear the dress I'd already bought as it's a bridesmaid's dress. I told her I respectfully declined as I couldn't afford another dress as I've already spent too much on this wedding and that I didn't want to make her uncomfortable on her big day. She then lashes out telling me that I should just take more from my student loans to buy a second dress. So with that I went and I cancelled the Airbnb and the limo. I told the other bridesmaids what had happened and they agreed it was fair. One of them must have told the bride about the secret bachelorette party as she messaged me telling me that I'm an a-hole and I've ruined her entire wedding as she now doesn't have time to book a new bachelorette party in time and she nor any of the other bridesmaids have the money or savings to book anything. I also managed to get the refund for my flight so really I'm only at about 450 for a wedding I'm no longer invited to. Am I the a-hole for cancelling the party and getting the money back? No, of course not. They a million percent brought this on themselves. Why the hell do they feel like they can say awful stuff to you and then apologize as if it's okay? Like, oh, sorry for lashing out. Like it's an excuse. And also not to mention all the trouble you've gone to for this wedding and all the money you spent on it. There's also a comment here from OP. Ah, uh, yes, I didn't include this part. Sorry, my bad. So the first time she messaged us, she didn't tell us nor explain what we were doing wrong. When we first all discussed it, she said that she just had a moment of panic and stress took over and she said things that she didn't mean. The most recent time she told me that she'd be uncomfortable due to the fact that we had a fight. The fight was her just removing me from the group chat and then cussing me out. She never told me what I wasn't respecting her wishes on, but I will say she did know she had a bachelorette party, but the surprise was what it was going to be. I have spoke to the maid of honor since this post and she said the bride told her that she didn't know how she felt about a skinny girl being next to her at the altar. Yeah, you need some new friends OP because this is not a friend. The bride definitely isn't your friend. The way they speak about you and the way they obviously view you. Yeah, no, these aren't the actions of a friend. And yeah, you're for sure not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents that my kids won't attend Christmas if everybody can't attend? My husband was injured when we were in high school, almost 18 years ago now, and uses a wheelchair now. We have four children, his 15-year-old son from a previous relationship, an 8-year-old daughter, a 5-year-old son, and a 1-year-old daughter. My parents usually host a big Christmas every year with all the kids and their families. Sometimes it's at their home and sometimes it's at a vacation destination. In previous years, it's always been accessible for my husband, but this year they've chosen to have it at a mountain ski resort that's largely inaccessible and would have a lot of activities that would leave my husband out. So we told him we're going to do our own thing for Christmas. No biggie, right? They responded by saying, how about you send the kids and you can do your own thing? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. We responded that we wouldn't be sending our kids and that if we couldn't all attend, nobody would attend. They're upset and they're accusing us of withholding the kids from something that brings them joy and being bad parents. Are we the a-hole? No, of course you're not. These have all been very obvious. Like, of course you're not the a-hole. The top comment says, not the a-hole. This is amazing. Of course not the a-hole. They've excluded your husband from Christmas and their solution is, oh, that's okay. You can just split up your entire family for the holidays? Do they have a problem with your husband? Because honestly, I'd almost feel like this would be less awful if they'd done it on purpose than if they'd been that level of ignorant towards him and your whole family. I can't believe they think you're bad parents. They owe you a huge apology and your husband. Oh, it's so frustrating when people think that the other person is in the wrong when they themselves are being awful. Yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for telling my brother, I guess you go to jail? I, 32, and my brother Tim, 24, has been trying to go to film school. In July, I got a flag on my credit report. Someone tried to co-sign my name on a private student loan. I found out that my brother somehow got the information from my mum, thinking that I wouldn't notice. Tim is on the spectrum. He doesn't have great judgement, but my wife was pissed because we're living with my in-laws on the other side of the country, saving up for a home once if the interest rates drop, and I have kept my credit flawless. So I did the things you're supposed to do to report it for fraud. I tell my mum and she doesn't 
doesn't say much. It slowly comes out that my brother couldn't get a loan and he found some paperwork about my parents' will that had my social security number on it just laying around. He couldn't get the loan without a co-signer and put me down. It takes months for this to come out so my wife and my in-laws pressured me to file charges on Tim. I told my mum what Tim did was wrong and illegal. My mum started crying and handed the phone to Tim and I explained to him about what he did and that he needs a lawyer. Again, Tim is autistic and started panicking about what'll happen to him after the headache of his actions and I said, I guess you go to jail. Since then, Tim went into a bad state and his meltdown caused him to be on psychiatric hold. He's in bad shape and my family blames me because he keeps saying I'm going to jail. I don't know if he actually would for what he did, but because of what I told him, he's regressed pretty bad and has been in a panic for weeks and isn't getting any better. My parents did get him a lawyer to try to calm him down, but he's back in the hospital again for another stay. I feel like the mum is the issue here and also what the brother did was wrong and they obviously know they shouldn't do that. There's a comment here that says something just doesn't add up. If he really is as incapable as your mum portrays him, how would he have gotten the idea to use your info to make you a co-signer? I feel like there's more information that your mum isn't telling you and probably never will. It sounds like they both, brother and mum, thought we'll get the co-sign loan and since we'll pay it off, OP will never have to know a thing. I wonder why your mum didn't just co-sign for him instead of likely helping him pursue this course of action. Being on the spectrum isn't an excuse for criminal behaviour. If he's sharp enough to go to film school, I gotta think he's also not so far on the extreme end of the spectrum that he can't understand the difference between right and wrong. Not the a-hole. Yeah, there's definitely more stuff going on here. The top comment says not the a-hole. Identity theft and fraud are serious crimes. Has he ever been held accountable for his actions? And OP says, not really. My mum always covers for him saying that he was autistic. He knows right from wrong because he always acted like this when he got caught doing something bad. Yeah, it sounds like the mum has been the real enabler in all of this. Am I the a-hole for calling my girlfriend a biatch for lying about an emergency to test my commitment? My girlfriend Andrea, 29 female, and I, 29 male, have been together for a few months now. Everything had gone smooth until yesterday when she pulled off a ridiculous stunt. She called me late at night to say that she's seriously injured and having panic attacks and that no one else is with her as her parents are out, which was true, they were out. She said she also got some chest pains and she thinks she's dying and that she's in a really bad state and can hardly breathe. She was heaving while we spoke. She begged me to help her, said that she'd already called 911, but that she also wanted to let me know and I was shocked. I took my car and I rushed to her house and it was only after reaching there that I found out that she was joking about it. She met me joyfully and said that she only wanted to see how committed I am during an emergency as that's an essential part of a relationship or something. Okay, red flags all over the place. I lost my temper and I asked her what the hell her problem was. She said that she was just testing me and I got pissed off. I called her an effing biatch and I told her that I did not deserve to be treated like trash and made use of like that. She was crying by saying that she only wanted to check whether I'm a good fit and that I overreacted. I left the house immediately and I haven't talked to her since. She's been texting me but I just ignored her. Am I the a-hole? Wow, yeah, you do not do stuff like that to your partner. Testing how committed you are. That's the most childish red flag immature sort of thing ever. Yeah, like this comment says, she was testing your commitment. All she did was prove to you that she doesn't deserve your trust or respect you as a person. Just tell her she made a great commitment test and thank her. Her test made you realize that she's not someone that you can commit to. Saved you a lot of time and trouble in the long run. And the comment above that one says, no, she's the a-hole. Testing you like that was a pathetic and childish thing to do. Find a new girlfriend. Not even married couples do that. She would have found out how committed you were when your relationship got to that stage. That's your red flag. Don't ignore it. And you caught her an effing biatch in sheer anger. You had every right to be angry. I would have been just as angry and said something similar. OP did update this and said after talking to her about it, I have decided to give her a second chance. She's apologized a lot and promised to never do that again. I'd be more careful, of course, and I won't be trusting her blindly, but I have thought that I'd give her one chance, especially since she's shown herself to be regretful. Yeah, that's a wild thing to do. And yeah, she didn't even consider how you felt or even think about how this would make you feel. Yeah, stuff like that isn't cute and funny. It's awful. Am I the yeah for telling my friend's boyfriend that he shouldn't have been allowed to eat? Some friends and I decided to do the trend where we have a dinner and everybody brings a food that starts with the first letter of their name. There's one friend of ours that's a bit of a moocher. Whenever we go out, she never pays for stuff, whether it's the dinner bill or tickets for the movies. We always end up paying for her, but everyone accepted this and doesn't really have an issue with it. However, recently it's become worse. She's been dating this guy for a couple of months and she brings him everywhere with her, even when he's not invited. 
good. So now we have two people to pay for. Also, I feel like I have to say that they do have jobs and they're not struggling. It'd be different if they were broke, then of course I wouldn't mind. But yeah, we had the dinner last night and everybody brought food and put a lot of effort into it. These two, however, showed up with absolutely nothing, not even a bottle of soda. We were annoyed, but nobody said anything. It wasn't until the end of the night when they were leaving that I cracked a little. The friend's boyfriend was taking home all of the barbecue ribs that were left. What? I repeat all of it and it was a lot. Like damn, be considerate at least. He emptied the entire tray of ribs into a container. Oh my god. I would never speak to these people again. How awful and rude do you have to be to do something like that? That's when I politely asked, can you maybe not take all of it? The others might want some too. He got all defensive and asked, why are you treating me like I'm stealing all the food? That's exactly what you're doing. What do you mean? He got angry, plopped the ribs back down and said, fine, I don't need your food. To which I replied, it kind of seems like you do. And to be honest, you shouldn't have eaten it all since you didn't even contribute again as usual. Then my friend came, took him and just left without saying anything. Now apparently she's angry with us, mainly me. Would you excuse me for a moment? Oh my god, the audacity. How self-centered and entitled are these people? Most of my friend group doesn't think I did anything wrong, but there are a couple who are saying that I shouldn't have said anything. What do you mean? Sorry, this one is so infuriating. Like this person takes all of the food. They're lucky that that's all you said to them. The thing is that I didn't even say anything to my friend because I don't mind that she doesn't contribute. Her boyfriend was the one irritating me. He eats the most food but doesn't contribute. Drinks the most alcohol, doesn't contribute. Orders really expensive meals at restaurants doesn't contribute towards the bill. Oh my god. What? <laughs> so I'm editing the video right now and it's actually kind of frustrating how much OP is going along with this and I don't feel like I said that enough in the video. Like why have you been putting up with these people and paying for them? Like I don't think the friend group should have ever started paying for their friend. Like on a frequent basis anyway. It's okay if it's every now and then but they can't expect that you're going to pay every time. And yeah OP and the rest of the friend group should have put a stop to this a long time ago. Okay, I think that's all I had to say. Thank you for watching, guys. I guess I got kind of annoyed and snapped at him. I tried finding her to clarify that I don't have any issue with her, but she's ignoring me. I don't know, maybe I should have left well enough alone. Okay, so first of all, your friend group has been far too kind to these people. If you're at a nice restaurant and somebody is ordering expensive stuff and they don't contribute to the bill, then guess what? They have an issue that they can take up with the restaurant. Why the hell should you pay for them. God, they sound so immature and entitled. Yeah, like the top comment says, you're not the a-hole for this event, but why do you and your friends tolerate them mooching like that? Tell them they need to pay their own way and do it. If you go to a movie, buy your own tickets and let them pay or leave. Get separate checks at restaurants and when the server first comes to the table, tell them you'll need separate checks. As a former restaurant employee, I can tell you that it is fairly easy to split a check, especially if you know it'll be split before you even start entering things and a royal pain to go back and split a check that you entered together. You and your friends have been complete doormats. When you let bad behavior repeatedly go unchallenged, it never stops and it often worsens. Yeah, they sound terrible, but you need to stop tolerating it. And yeah, I feel like OP's only issue is they put up with this crap for so long. Oh my god, I feel like that was rage bait or something. Imagining people like that, they sound so frustrating. Oh, I can't believe that. And they're getting upset at you? Unbelievable. And also, that's enough for today. After such a frustrating post, I feel like we definitely Definitely need some wholesome memes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. But let's read something completely different. It's pretty impressive how chill toddlers are when you remember that they usually have zero context for anything that's happening. Today, a week after we moved to another state, my son looked around and then asked, are we still on Earth? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, like they have absolutely no idea what's happening. That's so true. And it reminds me of that meme that said, cows are so chill considering that the floor is their food. I feel like it has the same energy. Dad saying that I should be a doctor. Mum saying that I should be a lawyer. Grandparents saying that I should follow my passion. Oh yeah, that's so beautiful. And so are grandparents. Snorting while laughing is the purest sound and it's not weird or gross. Thank you for this very wholesome positivity. Yeah, true. It's definitely a compliment.
moment, isn't it? Like, you're so funny that you made me snort. That's amazing. When your friends won't believe that they're cute and perfect. Oh, that's so nice. Like, stop whatever you're saying right now, okay? You're amazing. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more Am I the A-Hole, make sure you like and subscribe. That was an absolutely wild episode today. I'm still kind of in disbelief at the stuff that we read. And yeah, hope you enjoyed, guys. The comment of the day today goes to Viscera Steel Reviews. I love waking up to see a new choosing beggars as I make my hot cocoa. Oh, that sounds so nice. Like a cold day or something. You have a fire going and you have hot chocolate. And also choosing beggars. I hope you enjoyed the choosing beggars episode you watched. And yeah, guys, thank you for the support. It means so much to me. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!